okay day one of a three-day hunting trip chasing red deer here in Queensland uh, middle of August and yeah got a crack of three days coming up so hopefully we can get some we'll get a couple of red deer on the ground for some venison uh, so yeah this video has been me following the hunt seeing how we get on we've already seen two hinds um, they weren't hanging around but yeah, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, get our evening hunting, so stay tuned, we'll see how we get on. Yep, got one. Down. Yep. Yeah. One's down. I don't know about that first one. So I managed to get this little spiky. Um, I might just have a quick scout around there for that second one, I reckon. Yeah. But I reckon this is the first one I shot, and I reckon the other one was further that way. So just trying to see if I am. Um, Got the second deer. So we're starting to lose light pretty quick, so just want to put the time in now. Try and find the blood trail if I can. I reckon it would have been standing about here. Just looking for any blood. Just found some blood. Here's some blood here.
More blood. Yeah, I've got blood. Okay. I've got blood here. Yeah, there's definitely blood this way. Like, oh, it's hard to follow. Yeah, I can't find this blood trail. Fuck. Okay, the so legs are off, back stakes are out. It's starting to get dark, so I want to get off the hill. So I load up, I'm going to get out of here. You start, Ron, if you want. I think our best bet is just to get out into the open. Yeah, I'll just go head straight, I'll head straight through there. Yeah. Okay, we're on the move. Uh, I got the two back legs. Got the back stakes, front uh, front quarters are buggered with a bullet entry. Um, and now we're just hightailing out of here. Uh, I was gonna get out of here with them, um, yeah, before it gets too dark. So, nice first day. Good day, well, I think all up we would have seen oh, over 12 deer, so good start. And just when we came into those deer, yeah, it was just screaming deer, deer trails everywhere. Um, plenty of sign. And then sure enough, we came across four. Um, took shots to two. We found the first one. And then unfortunately, um, I found blood for the second one. But, yeah, I, I can't find it. And at the moment, it's more important just to get off the hill um, with Ron. So we'll see how we go. I might pop back here tomorrow and have another look. Um, it'd be great to get that second animal. You know, you take that shot. And you always, you know, you always want to get that meat, so that's the goal. There's nothing worse than, than leaving a, you know, an unknown or uncountable deer on the hill. But at the end of the day, that is hunting. Um, it's one of the, I don't know, I suppose, tougher aspects of it. So when you pull that trigger, you are making that decision to, to hopefully take a clean kill. Um, from the amount of blood I did find, I'm pretty sure the animal will be down. Uh, nice red. Nice red bright blood, so you know it's a good sign of a of a good hit. But yeah, like I say, it's it's never nice to leave an animal on the hill, but that's the reality of some some hunts. So uh, now I'm just going to focus on getting out of here and um, just getting us both up the hill safely. So oh, um, I can leave it to it before I come a cropper down the hill. So uh, stay tuned for day two. Okay, catch you guys. So I just got back to camp. Uh, I realized in all the commotion of walking back to the ute, I'd actually bloody dropped the GoPro, but amazingly managed to find it in the dark. So, bit of a win. So, a deer plus a GoPro found is a pretty good night. So what we're gonna do now is just butcher up the hindquarters and just give them a chance to cool down. So we pretty much got the hindquarters off into the bag and then straight out. So I just want to give it the chance for the meat to start cooling down. So I'll just get slicing. Uh, some of you guys might be interested. So I'm just gonna take the skin off and then break it down into its muscle groups and then just let it cool. Don't try and cut through the, the hair because the hair will quickly blunt your knife, so come from the behind. Makes life a lot easier. And then skin off, nice and easy.
young and anim young animals so it should be nice tasty meat and then we'll just break down the muscle groups Okay, day two of our trip. Um, got up early this morning and we've got a bit of fog in the in the valleys, so just glassing as we get patches or breaks in the fog. But yeah, crack a day. Wind's a little bit over the place, so we'll see how we go, but yeah, should be should be a good day. So I thought some of you might be interested to know a little bit more about the rifle that I'm running. Uh, this is my new setup. So what I've gone for is a Howler 1500 with a 26 inch barrel um, and in blued with a Hogue stock and everyone's favourite calibre, the 6.5 Creedmoor. So very happy with it, uh, taking one deal with it so far. That's the spiker you'll see in this video. Um, so I got the Hauer. What I'm also running is MDT scope mounts and a Sig Saw 4.5 by 14 by 50 scope. So I suppose the one thing that makes this setup a little bit different is the scope. So this scope actually Bluetooths to a rangefinder. Let's get it out. So what I've got here is another SIG Kilo 1400 rangefinder. What it does is all I need to do is range my target and this here has an illuminated rectangle that it actually automatically calculates your holdover. So so it's a 350 meter shot, you range it, and then the reticle actually illuminates where you where you need to hold hold you know hold for that for that shot. Pretty cool technology. I know a lot of people are probably gonna say, you know, it's cheating or whatever, but I saw it and thought it was something different and I was looking at a Leopold or I was there's a couple of scopes I was looking at a Leopold, a Zeiss HD5, um, and then I decided just I'll go something totally different. I've never had a SIG before and yeah, so far so good. There's a little bit of weight to it, uh, since it does have a battery, a couple batteries in the in the scope. The range finder's light as, so I just tuck that under there. And 
finally on the scope I'm just running a Morocco 30 stalker sling love that great for distributing the weight of the rifle and finally a bushbuck carbon fiber bipod so it cost me I think it was on sale for a hundred bucks for a hundred bucks it is bloody good so super happy with that that just folds up and that is the rifle I'm running for this trip so keen to hear your feedback about it but yeah if you haven't had a look at these SIGs have a look at them they're pretty cool bit of, bit of kit and so far no complaints right. time now is quarter three so we're starting to get on to or getting closer to that golden hour so just want to find myself a good vantage point set up and hopefully we might be able to get on some deer right. let's go check it out Well, you know how I was talking about technology before. Look at that, that's where the battery was. I don't know what's happened. Maybe I didn't tighten it enough, or when I've been playing around with the dials, I've accidentally been loosening the cap. So, it's going to be interesting to see how much a new one of those is worth. I'll keep you posted. You can see the game trail up through here. This wind though is fucking low the show, it's annoying. So I've just went back to the deer I shot last night and there's probably six wedge tail eagles on here. So shows you the circle of life. Um, I was actually come back to try and find that other deer. So Don't look if you want a bit squirmish, but just to show you how quickly, you know, they start breaking down here. Yeah. So, very quickly, that's all getting picked apart. They're circling out there in the distance. I don't know if you can see them, but they'll be back. Back for a feed. So I had a good look for that other deer, but no luck. Um, yeah, no other birds around, or so there might potentially be a dog on it or anything, but no. Couldn't see anything, couldn't smell anything, so don't know what happened with that one, which is disappointing. Um, so what is it? So it's just coming up to 4.30 now, so I still got a couple, maybe an hour and a half for light left. So there's probably the chance that Deer's gonna be on the move, out feeding, so we'll see what we can find. After losing the cap on my scope, I thought, oh, it's pretty much gone, but I thought the off chance. I had some luck last night finding my GoPro, I thought, oh, there's a couple of spots that potentially is a bit steeper, that's maybe where I've, I've lost it. And, but to believe it or not, fuck, so stoked. Amazing, I can't believe I found that. <sighs> like to find that, probably I've been work walking, I don't know, four or five K. My lucky day. Let's see if I can find the batteries. One. Should be one more. Well, if I find one battery, the cover. I think I'll, I'll take that. It's a little bit more of a look. Okay, last morning of the hunt. A 
up early and a bit of glassing to see if we can find deer out on the open before the sun pops up. Uh, so far been a good trip. Seen a few deer, but um I managed to put down that spiker which was which was good. But yeah, we'll see how our last day goes. And then back to the city. Okay, so just got back from the hunting trip. Managed the one spike for the trip. Uh, probably saw all up, I don't know, maybe 15 deer. Um, disappointing that I wasn't able to manage the second one. But like I said previously, um, unfortunately that's one aspect of hunting. Uh, now the plan is just clean up my gear, give the rifle a good clean up, and then start just giving the meat a clean. So. Stay tuned for the next video. So in the next video, what I'm going to be doing is making venison jerky for the first time. So from the meat that I've harvested, I'm going to give it a crack in the oven. A few different marinade types, so keep an eye out for that next video. Um, hit the subscribe button if you want, and then you'll, you'll know when that comes up. But hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Catch you later.